good evening friends colleagues and senior doctors of trichy uh, today i am going to give a talk on the tips and tricks of hysteroscopy so see so hysteroscopy there are only three things which you should, should everybody should know one is like what kind of instruments we are going to use and what pre operative techniques or pre operative procedures we should take before doing a hysteroscopy and how we are going to work up the patients before doing a hysteroscopy and each procedure like intervention hysteroscopic we should follow certain principles in doing the hysteroscopy so that we can be very careful and do the procedure without any complications so first we'll come to the definition of hysteroscopy it's a procedure where we'll visualize the uterine cavity and the cervical canal five instruments are there in hysteroscopy one is the telescope the light source the diagnostic and the operative sheet there are two sheets the diagnostic sheet and operative sheet and a camera now go out hd camera as well and input accessory instruments like when we do a intervention hysteroscope the loops the knife or what kind of coagulation we are going to use depending on the accessory instruments we should have so coming to the telescope there are three parts in the telescope one is the eye piece the barrel and the objective lens and there are various diameters of hysteroscope like the 4 mm diameter and the 3 mm diameter and the 2.9 commonly we are using the 2.9 and the 4 mm diameter 2.9 mm diameter is used for office hysteroscopy and 4 mm diameter we can use it for the intervention hysteroscopy is also so we should definitely have two hysteroscopes that is 2.9 and 4 mm so types what are the types uh, the angle is 0 degree and the 30 degree 0 degree where we can have a distant panoramic view but a 30 degree is always good in diagnostic as well as a therapeutic because we get the angles to see the osteo of the uh, uterine cavity so it's always better to have a 30 degree Uh, camera angle so the diagnostic sheet usually varies from 4 to 5 mm diameter where we can able to have a good delivery of the distending medium to the uterine cavity the telescope fits well into the sheath and there will be always a 1 mm gap between the sheath and scope so you should be very careful while using hysteroscope the telescope should fit into the sheath very tightly otherwise what will happen is that when the fluid is coming on get gets leaked when the fluid gets leaked between these two spaces you not have a good uterine distension so make sure that the telescope fits into the sheath properly now the resectoscope resectoscope we commonly use in all intervention cases like for dissection of a septum to remove a fibroid to do a hysteroidalysis we do we should have a resectoscope the resectoscope has three parts one is the inner sheath which has a common channel for the for the telescope the distending media wire is there and the electrode can be fitted into it the outer sheath is for the return of the fluid of the distending media which is a normal saline or a glycine and the lens already i said you 0 degree or 30 degree is there preferably 30 degree is better and the electrodes can be a knife a loop or a ball can be used light source usually a good quality light source is necessary a wattage of uh, 175 300 both are available but 175 is ro routinely used for all procedures so distancing media distancing media there are initial they are having co2 now the liquid is the distancing media and we use the low viscosity media and commonly used is the normal saline or ring electrode can be used glycine can be used when we are doing any resections because by we, but we should be very careful while using glycine we should be a little faster and should not overload the patients more than 6 liters or else there will be a lot of complication with glycine and make sure that when you are using a glycine use the monopolar so when you are using a glycine make sure you use the monopolar and when you are using a normal saline make sure we are using a bipolar because bipolar it passes through the electrodes so it is uh, complications are less with uh, bipolar but monopolar you have a good cutting end you can uh, do the thick fibroids or thick septums can be removed easily with the glycine but you should be very quick so the delivery system usually i prefer to have a hysteromat or the electron suction irrigation pump while using a intervention hysteroscopy because complications are less when we use that otherwise when you use a gravity fall system or when you use a pressure cuff the distension will not be equal sometimes you may try to uh, uh, send some air bubbles or you should be very careful and vigilant because sometimes the brothers or anybody assisting will uh, after the fluid is over they may just pump and the air may go and complications like air embolism can happen so whenever you are going to use an intervention cases if like removing a fibroid removing a polyp always better to have an electronic suction irrigation pump and the pressure should be around 75 mm of mercury 75 mm of mercury should be there when you are using a uh, gravity fall system you should make sure that uh, the, the 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 bottle is 100 meters from the patient's bed and make sure at least 75 mm pressure is coming that is when you keep it as 100 mm 
normally 75 to 100 mm of mercury will be the pressure system. Energy sources as I said you earlier monopolar is there where you, have, you can use a glycine with a monopolar, a bipolar if you are using make sure that you use a normal cell line, bipolar versa point is there, lasers are there, receptor scopes are there. Depending upon the case need you can use this. So, common indications for hysteroscopy, we are evaluating an abnormal uterine bleeding. For any infertility workup patients, it is always better to done, do a hysteroscopy plus or minus a laparoscopy can be good. Prior to IVF, definitely a diagnostic hysteroscopy very, will be very useful. For diagnosis of polyps, fibroids and uterine synechia, hysteroscopy is indicated. Operative hysteroscopy for endometrial ablation, resection of the septum, myoma, polyps, additions like Asherman syndrome where you can do an additionalysis where you couldn't remove a property with the help guide of the hysteroscope, you can see, visualize and remove the property. For taking biopsies, postmenopausal bleeding where you can use a hysteroscopy. In proximal tubal blocks where you want to cannulate the or remove the block in the proximal end, you can use a tubal cannulation with hystero and a laparoscopy. Contraindiction as everybody knows, a uh, recent history of PAD or infection, any cervicovaginal infections or extreme or heavy bleeding in pregnancy is a contraindicate for hysteroscopy. So, preoperative preparation is very much important in hysteroscopy. Make sure you have a detailed history and a complete examination of the patient. If possible, do a bimanual examination, do a physically complete examination, do a proper workup, take a cardiac clear. Any patients above 35 years, I always advise to take a cardiac clear, do an ECG echo. Because many times we lose patients while doing hysteroscopy. When doing intervention hysteroscopy, patient may have an underlying valid heart disease and because of the fluid overload, patients may collapse on table itself. So, detailed history and complete physical examination and workup of the patient is very important before doing any uh, diagnostic or maybe a therapeutic hysteroscopy. Preferably do it in a proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle. And all patients before doing hysteroscopy, before 4 to 6 hours, keep tablet mesoprostol at least 200 to 400 micrograms so that you can have a dilatation of the cervix so that you can pass the instrument. I preferably use a general anesthesia or a LMA is required. Spinal anesthesia can be used but I do not prefer a spinal anesthesia. Local also can be used with paracervical block but general anesthesia or a LMA is better for hysteroscopy. So, this is the case of septal resection which we did around one month back. Slide. So, see uh, uh, before doing a septum make sure it is septum or whether it is a bicornic uterus. Get at least a 3D scan done and make sure before doing the case it is septum only. So, that you are mentally prepared before doing the septal resection and when it is a septum it is always you can use a scissors or you can use a receptoscope also. I preferably use a scissors because the flimsy central additions can be easily removed with the scissors always come from below to the top and when you are cutting try to be in the plane in the center of the plane and once you are able to see that pinkish myometrial fibers or when you are able to see both the osteo, then you are done with your septal resection. So, septal resection preoperative make sure it is a septum. Number two point preferably use scissors, you can use receptoscope also, but receptoscope some complications are little more, but preferably a scissors is better. Go from bottom to top, once you are able to see the pinkish myometrial fibers or both the osteo, then you are done with the septal resection. Post operately, before they are saying you can use, you can keep a copper tea, have a review hysteroscopy after 3 months, or otherwise you can uh, keep a hysteroid valerate can be given 2 milligram for 2 to 3 months. This is another patient who came for uh, IVF because and she had also had a secondary amenorrhea. She was not getting periods for around 2 years. Then in the scan, we had a doubt of additions, we went with the di diagnostic hysteroscopy. And where you find completely after putting uh, uh, negotiating the external knowledge, we were not able to see anything, it is full of additions. So, another trick here is that when you put the try to use always a diagnostic a 2.9 mm to just to negotiate. Once you are with a 2.9 mm and you have got enough dilatation, change it to a 4 mm and just follow the path of the fluid. The fluid will tell you which direction to go. Do not try to put a dilator inside immediately. When you are going to put a dilator in these kind of cases, you will create a wrong track or you may perforate. So, you use a hysteroscope, see where is the fluid, the fluid will find its space. With that space, you try to go inside, where you will get a space. Once you get a small space, then you can use an operator sheet or side channel and slightly you can cut with the scissors. Once the scissors, if you cut, you will be able to set a beautiful uterine cavity can be seen.
there in this case you can see a very nice cavity just i was just following the fluid channel when the fluid was going it i used the scissors to just cut with the flimsy additions with that we are able to be inside the uterine cavity so the trick here is that don't use a dilator you will create a wrong tract or perforate follow the follow the fluid where the fluid is going you pass you go through it with a 6 o'clock position you can go it where you can find the cavity this is another case of hysteroscopy where the patient came with a proximal tubal block we had done a hsg and we found it was only a proximal tubal block so we did a hysteroscopy laparoscopy where in the initially put a diagnostic hysteroscopy make sure you are dilated then put a 4 mm uh, 4 mm uh, hysteroscope you pass a cannula try to be in the proximal part of the ostia then pass a metal catheter with a guide wire remove the cannula and the guide wire and try to push the blue and methylene blue and after uh, 40 to 60 ml of pushing of the methylene blue you can beautifully see the, the the mucus plugs or something would have been removed and you can see both the uh, tubes will be patent this is the case where the metal catheter you can see after that remove it off and afterwards you push the methylene blue dye commonly this is done for patient with proximal tubal blocks and patients usually conceive with another 2 to 3 cycles of iui no need nothing to be done for these patients you can see the guide wire is removed and only the cannula is left behind after that you are going to push the dye once the dye is pushed if you don't have if you can't able to do simultaneously laparoscopy hysteroscopy you can finish this and after change the camera to the laparoscopy part and see the dye coming out this is also another case so patient came for an uh, ivf when we are preparing the patient for endo preparation uh, we found a nice uh, polyp sitting in the cavity so we thought we had to remove it before the embryo transfer and when it's a polyp try to put a scope and try to catch the base you can use a resector scope or a scissors also can be used once the scissors hit you you may have some bleeding also if you if you anticipate bleeding of a bleeding is present try to coagulate it with a bipolar the bleeding gets stops and afterwards you can use with a hysteroscope uh, that uh, forceps you can remove the polyp out so i'm trying to cut at the base at the stock the pedicle with the scissors when you're cutting make sure you have ready in hand the bipolar coagulating system because if it bleeds or if it spurts out you can try and catch it out sometimes even without uh, need of the force of itself with that pressure itself the polyp may come out or a gentle curette also the polyp may come out or the polyp is removed so this is another case a patient is around 42 years old she has done two times I, ivf and her only problem was that she was not worried about the baby now she is only worried about her heavy menstrual bleeding because she had a type 0 a fibroid sitting inside the cavity so her only aim was to remove the fibroid retaining the uterus so you can see a 4 into 5 cm fibroid uh, sitting inside the cavity type 0 so what we have to do is that you go beyond the pedicle of the fibroid and try to resect that fibroid always when you are using this be as quick as possible and try to finish it as early as possible make sure that you don't use too much of fluid try to finish it with a maximum of 3 liter to 6 liters if you are using a glycine or even maybe a normal saline and uh, these kind of patients it's always better to counsel the patient at least they may require two sittings but uh, fortunately we finished this case in one sitting itself don't remove the instruments every time try to resect, resect as quick as possible inside and you not worry whether we have to take the bits of uh, fibroid which, uh, which is present it will, normal, it will automatically come outside once you are finished with the uh, hysteroscope the, all the fibroids with the pressure will come out if required we can use a small curette to remove the fibroids all the pieces will come out so here the only th trick is that we have to go and go beyond the pedicle try, try to resect, a, uh, resect, it, resect the pedicle and as quick as possible try to remove it in pieces and pieces and re remove it you can see all the bits which which came out after finishing the resection
so common complications are like we face uh, intraoperative complication and post operative complication the commonness is the perforation usually perforation occurs because without knowing the path whether which angle whether it is 11 o'clock position or 7 o'clock we just try to uh, put the dilate and try to dilate it you end up with perforation so always when you are dilating it and if you are not able to get it don't try to dilate again and again because you will go in a wrong track or you will perforate just remove it off see the hysteroscope put the uh, light source at 6 o'clock uh, degree and go with the 6 o'clock position you will be into the cavity so don't try to dilate if you are having any difficulty use the hysteroscope to guide and see the water flow and go at the 6 o'clock position second most complication we face is bleeding this is the second most complication so in, when you have a bleeding try to coagulate with a bipolar vessel point and other complications are media related complications which are commonly you find media related complications because of too much of overload or using a system like glycine where you use a dilution hyponatremia can, hap uh, can happen or a cerebral edema can happen because of the too much of overload post op operative complications are again hemorrhage it is because of the uh, circular of unrecognized bleeding which you find hemorrhage is there again here you have to tackle immediately with coagulating the system or if required do a histo or a laparoscopy and infection is again a second uh, post operative complication if you don't initially it's a find out whether the patient is having pad or if you miss any underlining so you do cervical infection infections are common thermal damage again if you perforate it and if the energy source have gone inside you can uh, lead, a, uh, lead a, end up in having peritonitis sepsis and everything so what are the important tips and tricks i, I just wanted to uh, uh, just again tell is that pre operative workup is very important if the patient is above 35 years make sure a cardiac clearance and a complete workup is done and a clinical examination and a cervical vaginal examination done if it is a septum do a 3d scan if required an mri scan number 2 dilators if you find difficulty in dilating don't be aggressive in dilating you will end up in a wrong track or perforate always use a hysteroscope to guide it see the water flow and go through the water flow number 3 is that make sure that you use a proper energy source when you are using a bipolar make sure normal saline is running when you are using a glycine make sure the monopolar is running and make sure that your assistant is having a look on the water flow if the water is going to finish make tell him that he has to change immediately or he should inform you otherwise the air bubbles will go and the patient will end up in air embolism uh, and always make sure that we don't use may, uh, too much of fluid overload should not be there restrict yourself to 3 to 6 liters of fluids thank you